Hi everyone, my name is Jesse from Sportmonks and in today's video I am going to show you how to get started using Sportmonks to build your reliable sports application. Now the first step in getting started will be to create a Sportmonks account and you can do so by visiting our website sportmonks.com and when you click on the button in the top right corner this will take you to our My Sportmonks environment. Here you can quickly create an account by filling in the details. Once you have created an account and verified your email, you will be taken to the dashboard. From here on, you will be able to manage everything related to your Sportmonks account, like managing your subscription, viewing your invoices and insight into your API requests. The second step will be to create an API token. We can also do this in my Sportmonks. You should be able to see the API tokens in the left side of the menu and if you click there, you should be able to create a new one yourself. This API token is needed to make requests to our API. You can give it a name if you want. And please keep in mind that the token is only shown once for security purposes, so I would recommend you to store it in a safe place. So in step three, we are going to make our first request. Once you've created your API token, you're of course going to want to use it. And our documentation pages can help you with that. Our documentation contains an endpoint overview, some how-to guides, and of course some general tips which help you in using our API. To make your first request, you can of course use Postman or your browser, or if you want to go really hardcore, you can also use a programming language. Let's take a little look at how the request is structured. First of all, we can see that we have to define the version of the API that we want to receive. And after that, we have to define the domain that we would like to receive. So this can either be a sport like football or cricket, or it can be a domain that is not sport specific. For example, our core domain, which contains information about continents, countries, cities, and regions, or it can be our odds domain, which contains information about bookmakers and markets. Now, after the domain section, which is football, in the case of this example, we define the actual endpoint. So in our case, we are going to request the fixtures by date range endpoint. Finally, you can use the query parameter to define your API token. Or if you are using Postman or a programming language, you can also use the authorization header to pass your API token. So if you have successfully made the request and received a response, because we have requested a fixtures endpoint, the first thing you'll see is a fixture ID. Also, you will see some other IDs of entities that this fixture is related to. For example, the sport ID or the league ID or the season ID that the fixture belongs to. We have more information about these entities and how they all relate to each other in our docs. Next to some relational IDs, you can also find the name of the fixture. Of course, you can also see the home score and the away score. And we also have the date that the fixture is starting at. Step four will be to enrich our requests using includes. You might think to yourself, how do I request some information that is related to the fixture? For example, I could see a league ID in the response, but how do I get more information about the league that the fixture is related to? So at Sportmonks, we have the so-called includes for that. In this case, I am going to show you how to use the league include and how to use the participants include to get more information about the teams that are playing this fixture. To add includes to your request, you can use the query parameter called include and pass your desired includes over there. In this case, we pass the include called league and we separate other includes by using semicolons. And after the semicolon, we can pass another include. So in this case, league, semicolon, participants. If we make the request again and we scroll a little bit further down, we can see that the requested includes have been added to the response. We can see that the response now also includes information about the league, 
write the name of the league, the country of the league, an image path which contains the logo of the league. And we can also see that more information about the teams who are actually playing in this fixture have been added to the response. Now, of course, we also have includes available about events that happens in a fixture or the lineups for the desired fixture. And all of the includes that we actually have available are listed on our documentation pages. So make sure to check them out. Now, after we have successfully retrieved the response, the last step would be to process the data into your application. How you want to process this data is of course dependable on your use case. Maybe you want to use our data for analysis, or maybe you want to build a fantasy game. We will have some separate how-to guides available, which will give you a global idea on how to really work with the data. And to give you some examples, we will have guides to how to build a live score page and how to build a schedule page. You can find a link to these how-to guides in the description of this video. For now, I would like to thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you have any more questions, you can always reach out to us via support at sportmonks.com.